Hey everybody and welcome back to another math lesson with Mr. Oldenborg. Uh, today we're going to be talking about multiplication and scaling. If you're following along in the book, this is lesson 8 dash... Let's go 8. Um, basically all this is saying is, hey, you have a value and we're going to do something to that value, whether we're going to scale it down, making it smaller, or scaling it up, making it larger. So we're going to be needing two things here. We're going to need to be able to multiply and we're going to be able to need to be able to uh, compare numbers greater than less than equal to. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is what you're looking at when doing a multiplication problem. Now I know in third, fourth grade we always talk about, oh, it doesn't matter the order of the numbers because the commutative property is like, you know, well, two times three is going to give you the same thing as three times two. Uh, and that's great and dandy, and that's true. But when you get to fifth grade, uh, number placement of your factors is actually going to matter, um, especially when we get to division. And if we put the number in the wrong start, uh, spot to start, we're already getting the question wrong before we do anything uh, because it will give you different answers depending on what happens. So we want to make sure that we're always doing best practices. All right? So what the heck are you talking about, Mr. Oldenborg? Well, we need to know that whenever we multiply, we have two factors. We have a first factor and a second factor. The second factor is the one that I always place first, which is completely opposite of the way that we read. I always read left to right. And, you know, uh, eventually when I talk about this, you'll see why it would make sense the way we read words. But we're reading math here, so let's keep that in mind. This should be the first factor that we place, the second one, because that's what you have to start. Anytime you have a value of you have this, it goes in the second factor space. The first factor space is what we're doing to the number, and that doesn't make sense for English semantics, because you would think you have something here and then multiply by what you're doing to it. Not the case. Because, um, you know, like I said, if I was in fifth grade, fifth grade Mr. Oldenborg would have said, oh yeah, two times one half. That means I'm starting with two and I'm multiplying it by half and I'm getting one. And that means I have less because I have less now. But as you can see, this actually increases the value because what I had to start was the half. And when I have half and I multiplied it by two, I got one. My original value is half. So if I start here with half and I end up with one, my value increased. Same thing here. If I start with 2 and I'm multiplying it by half, my value is going to decrease to 1. All right. So we also want to make sure that we memorize that anytime we multiply a number by a whole number, the value increases. Whenever we multiply a number by a fraction, it decreases. You're going to need to have that memorized to do this lesson correctly. So here we go. We have some scaling. This girl, Sue, she likes Joe and Alan a lot, so she knitted them scarves, right? She's like, oh, let me give myself a scarf, too, because she's all like, oh, whatever, we got a cool club. Good. So each of the scarves started out four feet long. All right? So here you go. Four feet long. Now, over the course of a month, uh, some kids, I guess, yanked their scarf. Some kids threw it in the dryer. So there was some shrinking and there was some stretching. So over the course of the month, this is what happened to Sue's scarves that she made for these people. Sue's scarf stayed exactly the same. Didn't change. We could have even put, you know, uh, times one because we know any number times one equals itself. Right? Now, the whole idea here is to be able to do this without actually doing the multiplication. So let's see what happened here. Joe's started out as four, and what happened to it? Well, it got one and a half times bigger. We multiplied it by a time and a half. So the value increased, all right? His should be greater than four now. Do I know what it is? No, I'm not going to bother the multiplying. It's six. But um, I should just know that it's going to be greater because I'm multiplying four by a whole number over here. Over here, Alan's must have thrown in the dryer because he started out with four and we're multiplying it by three quarters, meaning we're taking part of it, all right? It just shrunk. So I know my value here is going to decrease. It's going to be less than four. So if they had asked me, you know, hey, put these in order of greatest to least, I know that I had the same starting point of four. I know that Joe's increased from four, so he's going to have the greatest amount. 
Sue is going to be somewhere in the middle because she's unchanged. And I know that Alan's decreased. So what we're looking at here is um, scaling. All right. We, uh, if you ever bought a toy model car, you might see it says, you know, one sixth scale model because it's literally six times smaller than what it is in real life. And that's what's happening here. We had the same scarf and one got longer, one got shorter. And then we're comparing how much. When we take a look over here, uh, as I said in class, I have a huge problem with this question. I don't like this, and that's why I'm putting it on. It says, does a scaling factor always have to be the first factor in an expression? I say yes. Are you going to get the same answer regardless of where you put it? Sure. However, we need to always make sure we're practicing best practices. If I'm always going back to slide two, where it's talking about, you know, um, what you start with and what you do to it, then yeah, what I do to it should always be my scaling factor, all right? Because if I have half and I put it here, now I'm saying my scaling factor is here. It doesn't make any sense because that's not what I started with. It's not what I have. So will you get the same answer? Yes. Will it be 100% right? No. No. So always, even though it's not going to matter, please make sure you're doing best practices because you're going to see that when we get to here, all right? And I'll explain more in a minute. But I do not like this um, because the book says it doesn't matter, but it totally does. And we know we're smarter than books. So let's take a look at what we have because this is what the problem is going to look like. You are so used to seeing something that looks like this. And you're like, okay, time to solve it, right? Whoop. But we're not. What we're doing is we're comparing. We're comparing two and two thirds to two and two thirds. Okay? Now you'd say, hey, those are equal. Yeah, except I'm doing something to it. Something's being done. All right? So what I want to know is what's being done? How does it affect this two thirds? And how is that relationship to the original number? All right? So here I have what I'm doing to the original number. Here I keep the original number, all right? And now we're just talking about greater than, less than, equal to. So I have two, thir two and two-thirds times another whole number. What do I know? I know the value is going to increase because I multiplied two whole numbers. I should get more than six over here. So I know that since the value is increasing, and it should be around six, I know that this number, whatever it's going to be, is going to be greater than two and two-thirds. No actual math needs to be done aside from knowing what's going to happen. Because they didn't ask us what it equals. They just said, how does it relate to the original number? And it's going to be greater than. Remember, Pac-Man always eats the greater number. There you go. Yum. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. We have two and two-thirds again. And this time we're multiplying it by a fraction. We've memorized when you multiply a number by a fraction, the value decreases. So whatever this is, it's going to be less than our original number. And then finally, I do not like this. Here we go. Technically, I have 1. All right. My scaling factor is 4 and 3 fourths. I'm comparing it to 4 and 3 fourths. Four, and f four fourths equals one. Any number times one is itself. These are equal. However, my problem is I'm not comparing it to my original number. Because here, my original number is four and three fourths. And here, my original number is one. And what I'm saying is I'm multiplying 1 by 4 and 3 fourths. Sure, this scale is making this 1 larger, and it's making it equal. But I'm no longer comparing two identical terms, all right? This start number is not the same as this starting number, all right? The end numbers are the same, but not the beginning. And that's why I have a problem with this question. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm usually wrong, but uh, that's just the way I see it. 
Finally, the last thing I want to talk to you about today is putting numbers in uh, order. And the first thing you need to do is you have to pay attention to the directions because a lot of you guys still do greatest to least every time without reading. This one's least to greatest. Okay, so since this is scaling, I look, hey look, three-fifths in each one. I'm starting with three-fifths. What am I doing to it? Well, let me just go through and mark what I'm doing. Here, I'm taking three-fifths and I'm multiplying it by, oh, I got, don't have the right cursor. I'm multiplying it by two, a whole number, right? What's that gonna do? That's gonna increase my value because any number times a whole number goes greater. Over here, I have three-fifths times two and a quarter. Well, that's another whole number. My value is going to increase over here. Over here, I have three-fifths times a fraction. Well, a number times a fraction is going to decrease the value. And finally, over here, I have three-fifths times five over five, which is one whole, and any number times one is itself. So this is going to stay the same. Now, the reason I did that is I like to take notes. I like to see what's going on. So my original number is 3 fifths. Right here is where I'd always start, at 3 fifths. I know I have one value less than 3 fifths and two above it. So what do I know right away? I know my least number because this is going to be the smallest, the only one that went down. So first of all, I'm going to write this. I have a stylus now. Helps a little bit. I also know that this value is equal, and these both went greater. So this is going to be my second number. Whoops. Got ahead of myself, and I started another semicolon. Oops. All right. Now, here's where I'm stuck a little bit. I have two numbers that increased. How do I know which one's different? Well, we already said these two numbers are the same. So forget about them. Let's look at what I multiplied them by, these factors. I have two and two and a quarter. So instead of comparing these, I'm gonna compare what I multiplied them by. Here I multiplied by two, here I multiplied by two and a quarter. Well, two and a quarter is greater than two, so this must be the greatest value. So we just go, we finish up the problem. Sorry about that too, it should be way bigger. Boop, now it's disgusting. Oh, this is why I can't have nice things. There we go. A little better. Still writing like a four-year-old. And that's it, guys. That's how uh, we scale. We take a look at what we have, we look at what we're going to do to it, and we compare it to its original value. All right? This has been another uh, math lesson by Mr. Oldenborg. Hope you're enjoying these. I hope they're helpful. Um, again, I'm sorry I'm one-shotting these because I don't have a great editing program. So hopefully this helps you do your homework. And uh, today let's take a victory dance with some Final Fantasy II victory music.